to a new episode of Photography Behind the Scenes. It is November and November is doing its thing and it's a beautiful misty morning. It's about six o'clock at the moment and it's just getting bright but it's probably going to take about an hour still until we've got proper brightness which might be important because I was thinking of starting there but uh, I'm not too sure about going down that path. <laughs> Firstly, it looks quite creepy, and secondly, I don't really know what I would be photographing there because it's just completely dark. So I think it's more interesting to do the artificial light street lamps first. So let's stick to the main road and see what we find. This is the setup today, Sony A7 III with my tube light. Again, I'm tempted to play around with colored lights today. Let's see if we find any good opportunities. Maybe if I place myself over there, but come back here for the photo, this might be an interesting color contrast. All right, so I found this nice frame where I can stand in the middle, like in between of a bunch of things. I think it's a really nice framing. At least I want to try it out. This is pretty exactly what I was thinking of. So here is shot number one and this is a great start in my opinion. I love how the composition and the framing turned out. The photograph is full of delightful details but not to a point that it feels overly cluttered. Also I really like the mixed colour of the lights here. Okay, I'm going to try out another one of those coloured photos like I did last time. So, I've set up the light and I'll set up the camera now and then I'll run back to the light. It has this interesting effect, I don't know. I just want to keep doing it. Yeah, that looks cool. It just looks so mysterious in the distance, this eerie pink out of nowhere. All right, let's see if that worked. It's all right. I'm not quite sure. I think it might need some editing um, because it's too much brightness in the foreground. I might have to like vignette it quite strongly. We'll see. So here it is, instead of vignetting the top and the bottom I ended up cropping it to the cinemascope aspect ratio which fits this subject matter really well I find. The photograph overall worked out but it's not great I think, I love the empty road and how the light reflects on the concrete. The pink light and me running into it worked out, however I really dislike that car parked behind me. If that car were not there the scene would feel completely empty and devoid of people in a pretty cool way. Also, I think this is a photo that needs to be seen big to feel the emptiness, apart from the car of course. I'm afraid it doesn't have much of an effect when viewed small, but overall I think it's fine and I'm glad I got it. Alright, it is slowly getting bright now, so I think we can now enter the park and actually see something and try shooting something. So I've got somewhat of an interesting frame with a cool leading line and I'm just not quite decisive yet on to do it with the light or without the light. So I guess I'll just do both. <laughs> I'll try it without the light first and see what it looks like. Hmm. I mean, yeah, it's cool. I'm not impressed. <laughs> I'm not quite sure. It's, hmm. Like it's got some cool elements, but also I want to try it with the light, but I don't really know where I would put it. Here's the photo, and luckily in the editing process I was able to emphasize what I liked in the shot so that now I like it a lot actually, much more than my initial reaction. 
The preview that I saw after shooting was lacking contrast in both the tonal values but also in colour. I brushed over the lights here to strengthen the orange colour and separate that area from the rest of the photo. For me, it brings across this feeling of mystery and solitude just in the way that I like it in these kind of shots. So I was still aiming to get a similar shot with the tube light, but I didn't want to do it here because the mix of the cold atmosphere with the orange light plus the pink light felt like a bit too much for me, so I moved on to the next street where I could get the shot without the lamps. I hope there's not going to be a car coming around the corner then. Okay, I think that should be far enough. So. Whew, all right, yes, I like that. I wonder if that worked. It's actually quite an interesting combination because I'm barely visible. It's just like I'm a, a little detail that you'd actually have to look carefully to see, which I kind of like. <laughs> anyway, that's uh, good for here. I think let's move on to the park. Here is the result and I think it's pretty cool, but not quite what it could have become. I love the atmosphere again and especially the shape of the tree on the right. The idea with the light is where the issue lies for me. The contrast is great, but too strong I find. I didn't account for the fact that the sun was only just rising and so it was still pretty dark, therefore I shouldn't have set the light to full power and instead maybe only to 50% because the way it looks now it's just way too bright and strong in my opinion. But apart from that, I think this is a successful shot. here on top of the water and was looking around for any shots and I noticed that the ducks were swimming right into a nice frame so I got a quick shot. This is it and I think this is pretty cool. I'm going all in with the blue here and just playing with the shapes and outlines of the water and the ducks. The ducks are a neat subject I find. Nice. Maybe it's best not to actually shoot this but shoot from here like over there. And so that is what I tried. Using this unique position above the water, I set up another automated shot and ran to the beach in the distance, if you can call that a beach. Oh God. <laughs> GoPro is like wiggling on the camera and I'm really scared that if it falls down here, it will fall into the water. Ooh. Here is the result, and I think it's pretty good. I like that the two ducks decided to be part of the photo. Here's one more shot that I got of the pond to simply capture the mood. Next up, I approached the plants here on the side of the water to try a slow shot photograph which might be interesting because of the windy conditions. Here's the result, and I like it. I went for a really dark colour grade which I find suits the mood and sets the tone effectively. The slow shutter adds a bit of movement to the photo which I find makes it more interesting. <laughs> Just a little bit of exercise in between. Oh, I like that path. I don't think it's really anything. But what I do think is something is this forest here. 
So as said, I was not expecting much of that photo, but now looking at the result, I actually really enjoy it. The curvy path and the slightly twisted tree on the right in this foggy atmosphere are some things I find quite intriguing actually when looking at this photo. So I decided to make another shot with the tube light and walked up to these trees here to position it. I guess some of these work, I'm not so intrigued by this one. I'm not too sure about it. Um, it might be one of the weaker ones. Anyway, I can see there's a hill over there and some open space, which could look interesting. I'm not quite sure yet what kind of photo I might be able to get there, but I think it's worth checking out and trying that. So this one didn't really work out so well. Again, the light is too bright, but also the scene is kind of too unclear. Maybe it was too dark or something, I'm not sure. It's hard to tell here for me what went wrong, but it's clear to me that something is not working. Then I was intrigued by the hill and the trees across the field, and so I decided to try another landscape self-portrait again. <laughs> Alright, let's see if that walk was worth it. Wow, that's small, but I kind of like that. Oh, nice! Here is the result, and I think it's pretty good. I like how the shot moves from the foreground all the way to the horizon, with bits of interest here and there along the way, such as the white flowers at the bottom of the frame. So I have an idea, but I'm not sure if I can pull it off by myself. I think this would be an adequate time to have a model, actually, with me. Um, but basically I want to get one of those photos where like somebody's running and uh, you're kind of fading in the motion blur. I've got a shutter speed at one sixth of a second at the moment, thinking that is pretty slow and should do the trick. Um, it's just that it's a bit hard to frame something like this, it's not going to be a very close photo I think. I don't know. Let's just try it out. dancing in front of the camera. I have no idea what that's gonna look like. Ah, actually the shutter speed is kind of a bit too slow. I'll go a bit faster, how about one tenth? All right, let's see how the second try turned out. Okay, I like the shutter speed, that's I think pretty much perfect. Now it's just a question of framing. Okay, so I think I've got it now that uh, the shot speed is looking good and there might be one that is working in there, but I think I'll try it a couple more times and uh, then see in post if there's one that I like because it's still a very, well, random process. The camera just shoots at some point and I hope that it's capturing a moment that in which the pose looks somewhat interesting and the framing. So I'll just uh, increase my chances of getting a good one by trying it a couple more times. So here are the results. I've chosen a couple ones that I like and some are actually edited differently, which mostly depended on how close I was to the camera in that moment. Especially on this one, I went for a very dark look, whereas this one is a bit more of a normal brightness you could say. I like all of these, the slow shutter speed is doing exactly what I wanted it to do, and I love the mood captured in these. Ah. 
Then, I had come back to the residential area and was exploring the streets here. I found a spot that I thought was worth photographing simply because it looked cool in the fog. Here's the shot, and I love it. I think the two main aspects of this photo that draw me to it are the fog, of course, and the emptiness. It's so quiet. Hmm. Yeah, this is so cute. Ooh. I hope I can frame this tree. I just spotted something that I haven't shot in a while, I think, but it used to be mandatory on every shoot. Power poles. <gasps> Ooh, that's cool. So I was really liking this scene here with the brownish gravel path leading across the grass with the power poles. So it was time for another classic landscape self-portrait. Here's the result, and I love how this turned out. The colours look fantastic, the power poles are doing what they do, being great, and the overall mood is just fascinating to me. Also, I find this combination, or contrast I should say, of nature and man-made infrastructure quite interesting. It was there that my GoPro's SD card was full, but my hunger for more photos in this foggy weather was not full yet, and so I just kept going. Here are the shots that I got. so so lucky in this moment. I was doing my typical self-portrait thing as suddenly the birds on the side of the bridge decided to change their location and collectively flew above me. At the time I wasn't sure whether they were even going to be in frame and so once I saw this photo I was so delighted. And so that wraps up this video. Let me know which shots you enjoyed, I'm always curious to know what you think. Anyway, that's it for this week. If you had a good time, I'd appreciate a like on the video, consider subscribing if you haven't yet. And I shall see you again next week in the next video. Until then, goodbye.